Hello everyone, welcome to our second Vista by ChromaQ webinar. My name is Jacques and I'm going to be the host for today's uh, session where we're going to be talking about uh, the FX engine amongst other things, uh, time permitting. Also on the webinar today, we've got co-hosts uh, Ben Coleman and Paul Peltier who work hello. alongside me on the Vista development. Hello, hello. Good um, morning or afternoon, I guess. So I'm going to be taking you through uh, most things. If you do have any questions throughout the webinar, do uh, feel free to post those in the chat. Ben's going to be monitoring that. And there's any questions? We'll oh, oh, is that the mail? See if we can go through them. So with that, I uh, I think we can begin. I'm going to start today by talking about the effects engine. We've had quite a lot of questions and requests to go through that. So I want to start there first to make sure we had enough time to go through all of the settings that you might need there. And then time permitting, we'll move on to some uh, other sections as outlined in the webinar as well. So to begin with, I'm going to uh, select some fixtures and turn them on and put them in a uh, pre-made position preset. Within Vista, there are actually a number of pre-made uh, factory effects templates. So you can find those in any uh, component quick picker. And you can also filter them by feature. So there are a number of factory standard ones. For example, we can come here to uh, position and do a small circle or a larger circle. So these effects run around the base point, which for things like position basically means where you focus them to. So if the base point's on the singer, the circle effect will run around there. If it's around the guitarist, it will run around, around there. So this is something that we call the, uh, the base point. You can also save your own effects templates. I'll tell you how to do that later. Or you could use these factory standard templates as a starting point to edit if you forget how to make a certain type of effect. To create your own effect from the very beginning, we have an effects button, which is next to the release key in the function key toolbar. Um, for those of you that weren't with us in yesterday's webinar, I am actually using a preview of the R3 release. Um, so you might see some things that change. One of these is the toolbar actually can move around to suit preference. So it's down here in today's webinar. But anyway, the effects window uh, pops up. This can actually be undocked. So in your system, you might find that it actually pops up on the right hand side. This is where it lives by default, but you can untab this and float it and put it where you want. Personally, I like to have it over on the left hand side just so I can work with the effects editor, but also access some features to change over on the right hand side as well. So to create a new effect, we first make a fixture selection and then press the new effect button here and the create new effect window will pop up. There's two main types of effect in Vista. Uh, they're called a wave and a swing. And you can then choose what feature you want to run this effect over. I will demonstrate both, but we'll start with a wave effect and position. The default position effect is actually a circle, again, running over where you focus your lights to. So if I just tilt these up in the air a little bit, we should see the circle running over these, these fixtures. The rate is the speed of the effect and you can type a number numerically in here or you can click and drag to decrease or increase the size of this effect. I'll come back and talk about masters and cycles um, a little bit later on. So this is the circle effect. We can adjust how much tilt is in this effect by moving the vertical slider. So you can see I can add more tilts. Or if I reduce that again, I could also choose to increase the pan or decrease the pan. We've also got a number of pre-made shape templates as well. For instance, you might just want to go to a tilt wave. I'm just gonna move this up and make it a little bit bigger. I'll also just drop that upstage a little bit and I'll slow the effect down just for the next demonstration. Some more settings here, you can play with um, rotation and things like being able to re reverse the odds and uh, the evens. I'm not going to um, go through all of this now. 
uh, but you can play with that in your own time. The sequence tab, this is where we find some additional settings and two important ones here are called uh, overlap and stagger. I'll just try and demonstrate what these, uh, what these do. And I'll just point this up a little bit so hopefully we can see. And we'll just slow back down a touch. Okay, so with the overlap at 0%, what happens here is every fixture completes 100% of its cycle before the next fixture starts its turn. So a cycle in this example is all the way down and all the way back up again. So when one finishes, the next starts. The 50% overlap, what this means is halfway through a cycle, so when one fixture gets to the bottom, the next fixture starts its turn. So you can think of this as if you like, 50% is one fixture doing the effect at a time, and the next fixture does it, and so on and so on. Increasing up from 50%, more and more fixtures start to get involved in this effect. And at 100%, all fixtures are at some part of that forwards, backwards movement. The stagger. This is like an offset. So if I reduce the stagger to 0%, you'll see that all of my fixtures move uh, exactly at the same time. And if you increase the stagger a little bit, you can see there's a slight offset from between when one starts and when the other one starts. So you can increase and decrease this. A tip that I would give is if you're trying to create an effect, I'd perhaps try one of them. And if it doesn't give the look that you expect, just reset that back to 100% and try the other one. The chances are you're gonna get the effect that you want. Hey, Jack. Mm -hmm. Can we go back into the position effect? There's a question about what the customize tab looks like, what the customize does in position. One second, let me just pop this back over here. Uh, just here. Yeah. So with the customized tab, um, you can basically change the waveform of the, uh, the pan and the tilt um, and rotate the phase and offset. Um, to be completely honest, in all my years of working with uh, Vista, which is above 10 now, I have never in my life used those customized settings. Um, so I'll, I'll chime in on that one because I have actually used some of those. Uh, in some of those waveforms, I found that the, the other types of waveforms that you find in the customize tab can be handy to make some very creative effects. Uh, the basic ones there are, eh, they're okay. But in customize, you have some other interesting ones. Hit the drop down on the wave. Like the triangle tilt and triangle pan, uh, they have a little different waveform where it's a, a, a hold time and then, then it slopes up. I don't know if we can really visualize it here at all. Um, but they are, there can be some fun things to play with in there. So again, it's something if you're looking at um, experimenting with effects, you can find some interesting things there. Well, I was gonna say about not using this is personally, I prefer to use the second effect type, which is a swing effect, where you can actually define the, the wave of each kind of step of the effect, which I'll demonstrate uh, when we get to the, ad the advanced effects, but it's just more ways of being able to customize rather than it just like Ben said, just being a, a sine wave up there. Yep. Uh, or not. Um, what was I talking about? I was talking about uh, stagger over here. So the default um, selection order, also the default order that the effect runs in, by default is selection order. So typically this is how you're moving your mouse or pointing device around the screen? Is it right to left? Um, is it some order that you've actually specifically defined? Other options here in this drop down is ID number. So this will take the ID number that you set in the patch and it will go from the smallest to the largest. Random, uh, the console will just decide a random selection order for you. And if you click the preview selection, it will actually just pop red for a moment and tell you what that new selection order is. So it's just completely random. So it looks like that. And uh, the last one is position. And this is based on how you've laid your fixtures out in the fixture chooser. Vista will work top left to top right and then work downwards. So in this case, um, ID selection and position are the same actually. The fan curve relates to the fan shape. Uh, again, you've just got more options on here, whether you want it to be um, a, a different curve. Simply though, I think most people would 
typically keep that linear. And this just means, is it running from left to right? Is it running uh, ends out? Is it running ends in? Again, against your selection. This box here, this is to do with multi-element fixtures that you may have in your show file. So, so single fixtures that have more than one element. In this example, uh, just here, let me, um, in fact, what I'll do is I will, uh, I'll just select these 20 units at the top and these are multi-element fixtures. They've actually got four rings. You can just see that if I zoom in a little bit there. So if I press update selection, the selection <coughs> will now run over these, uh, these effects as well. But if you excuse me for a minute, a better example is to show you intensity because you'll see this visually in the uh, fixture chooser. So if I do the same thing, do an intensity wave effect, um, some other shortcuts here. So is it fading up and down? or is it square? If it's square, it will snap on or off. And if I just reduce the overlap a little bit here, you can see, certainly when you look at these multi-element fixtures, where it's running down each individual um, element individually, if I just zoom in here, you can see it's going down each individual element. Whereas if I take the uh, effect setting and change this to become group elements together, you can now see that the console is automatically doing the maths for all elements in that fixture to be controlled together. So this is really useful if you're using mixed trusses of just normal single element spots and washers, and you want to combine that with multi-element fixtures, you can just say, hey, group that together so it all looks nice and uniform running down uh, your, your trusses. If I press um, just control Z a couple of times, just to bring in that tilt wave effect that I had going on before, I can hopefully explain what blocking is. So if I just reduce my overlap to become 50%, so uh, as I mentioned, this is uh, one fixture at a time. Slow that down a little bit. I've still got the effect going on there. Here we go. So blocking is like a, you can think of it as a group. If I do a block of two, the lights would move in pairs. So two, 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 two. If I do a block of three, they'll move in three, 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 and then the last odd one on the end there. So that's what blocking is. It's grouping them together. And you actually see a little preview down here, which helps you explain what's going on. A repeat of two, we can see it's A and B. So this is odds and evens. If I do a repeat of three, it would be A, B, C, and A, B, C. So this would be a free run down there. What a lot of people don't realize is whenever you see blocking or repeat in Vista, not only here in the effects editor, but also in things like um, custom sorts, is we can put forward slashes to break this up. So I could do two slash three, and it would two, then three, and two, then three down these guys just here. That's more useful for things like uh, these multi-element fixtures here, but hopefully you get the idea of what I'm trying to demonstrate there. So that is a position uh, wave effect. I'm going to show you a color mix wave. So if you need to stop an effect from the editor, you can press stop effect just here. And I'll just select these same spots. And this time I'll show you a color mix wave effect. What makes wave effects um, is basically a rainbow with a few subsettings of this rainbow. So we've got what I would call a fading rainbow here, a RGB that snaps, a CMY that snaps between the colors, and a snappy rainbow. This one is actually color mix uh, black and white is what this one is down here. Let's just go back to the snappy rainbow. You still got all of the overlap controls and the stagger controls as well, if you need to spread that out. It's exactly the same as position. And you can see again down at the bottom, you've got the customize, the same customize options on reducing the amount of red, green, or blue in the effect as well.
But if you have a couple of, if you have a certain color look in mind, typically I always suggest using the second effect type, which is a swing effect. So if I demonstrate this, um, we can add a color mix swing effect. Um, and this basically lets you choose what you want to swing between. So you can see by default, there's two steps here and you just pick a color. So if you want to go from blue to yellow, you can see it will then fade in a linear curve from blue to yellow. And if you want to change something, you just pick the colors and, and change it. You can also change the curve as well, which is I was talking about, this is my preferred way of creating my own more advanced effects and having more control over how stuff's fading in and out. So I could choose to snap green, then fade back to magenta, or perhaps do a magenta on, on both. It's completely, completely up to you. You can also use presets if you've got some stored. So I could choose to go from the blue preset to the uh, cyan preset. And of course, if you update these presets, they also update the look of the effect as well, just as normal preset behavior. If you want to add a second, or sorry, a third or fourth step, as many as you want, you can just click the plus and you can now see that I get a new step. You can just keep adding these and changing uh, the colors that you want to do, do in here. But for now, let's delete them. And I'll just go back to something that hopefully you can see a little bit more clearer in WYSIWYG. I'll also just make this 50% so you can see it one at a time. This actually will be a good example to talk to you about the actual effects rate speeds at the top here because you can see that quite clearly on WYSIWYG. So our rates are always per minute. So this is 60 beats per minute. Um, and this is also what would change if you were to tap the effect rate. You can see a tap effect rate here in the effect editor. So I can tap this uh, with my mouse. And this would also be the same if you're tapping the effect rate on the console as well, which I'll explain a little bit more uh, very shortly. So let's just pop that down to 60. And what this is doing is this is 60 cycles per minute. That's what this box here means. And the cycle is all of these lights flashing once. So that is one cycle. So generally, if you want to tap an effect rate, you usually want to tap the per fixture to per fixture rate. Otherwise, um, the effect's likely going to be, it's going to look far too fast. So now if I'm tapping this effect rate, it's now accurately following the one step to the next fixture because that's the per fixture rate. So if I could give you one tip to take it away with you, it would be if you want to tap tempo something, make sure you're doing per fixture rate. Otherwise it will look uh, really fast. Let's go in and add in a, another effect. So I'm going to add in a new effect again, and I'll choose a position swing effect. In a similar way, I can use some presets so I can go from my singer to my up position. So in my programmer, I've got two effects running and you can see them up here. I've got the position effect and I've got the color effect to give this stage look. Now, sometimes that might be great um, and suitable for your needs. These two effects actually don't know with the other ones running in the background. So the look that you see on your stage is actually a complete happy accident, which like I said, sometimes is good, but sometimes you might need to be more specific about that and link them. And we call that an advanced effect. So if I press stop effect on my position here for a moment, let's just stop that and that will uh, go away. If you go into the advanced tab of an effect, you can see a little plus and minus down here. If we click the plus button, we get the same create effect window as before. So again, we'll choose position and swing. But this time we'll notice that we haven't got a second effect up here, but we have got a second feature tab here. So this is two features within one effect. So again, if I just go to my uh, singer position and I will slow this down quite a lot. And 
if I just increase the uh, overlap again. So here you can see it's always yellow when it goes up in the air and when it comes back down, it's always blue. So the effects are completely linked together and you could go as crazy as you want in terms of your creativity. You could do the same thing with perhaps uh, zoom. And again, you can just alter the, you could have it zooming out to 100% and then back down when it gets down to the, uh, the singer there as well. You'll see that more clearly here in WYSIWYG if I make it snap. So really the possibilities are endless. And in the advanced tab, you can see them all stacking up visually on top of each other, of which you can adjust by clicking and dragging on this as well. So we get asked quite a lot how to create the sort of classic waterfall type effect. This is how you do it. You do it with swing effects um, from the advanced tab. So if I just minus the zoom and the color mix, I'll just show you that by adding intensity exact same thing. So if I now do zero intensity, just make it snap. You can see you only ever see it fly out. You never see it come back down. And of course, because they're linked, it doesn't matter if you change the um, speed or change how it's running in the fan shape, you'll never see it come back down. So that is a quick introduction to uh, linking effects together from within the the advanced tab. While we're in the advanced tab, I'll quickly talk about uh, bound and free effects. And to demonstrate this, I actually need to program uh, a queue list. So let's create a new queue list. We'll pop the lights on my singer in yellow to begin with. Let's add in a new effect. We'll do a position way for this, it's okay. Here he is. In Q2, we'll just make it change color. And in Q3, number three, we will change position to be up in the air. So this is how the cue plays back. Q1 is a circle around my singer. Q2 just changes color. And in Q3, we see a new position event, which is that position up in the air. So in Q3, we transition to that new position, but the effect stops. And the reason the effect stops is because the effect is bound to the queue that it was created on. And bound is the default setting when you create your own effect. Um, although you might find that some of our factory standard templates actually use this setting, which is a free effect. So what free means is it's going to continue to be run around new position events that it sees within this single queue list. So if we play the same example now, Q number two is a change of color. And Q number three, we fly up in the air, but the effect continues to run around that new position. And that will happen indefinitely until we tell it to stop. So even if I made, let's go down to the uh, band members, let's say, in Q number four, if you want this effect to stop, you have to physically program a stop effect. And the way that you do that is by default on the function key toolbar, if I hold down the blue modifier um, or control alt on the keyboard, you've got the stop effect command, or you could find it um, in other places, such as the little drop down on each feature here. I can press stop effect, and that will actually program the stop effect into that, um, that event there. So that's a little introduction to um, it bound. It is also important to note that when effects are running, because it's tracking, they continue to run until they're told to stop or if they're bound until a new event is put in there. So mm -hmm. uh, just be sure to remember that, that, you know, when something's running, it keeps going. So at those stop effect events are very important to add. Do we have any questions on uh, that particular section there? Or are we happy to? No, nope, uh, we're good with that. Good to carry on. Cool. Uh, let's talk about, uh, We'll just quickly mention the last two settings here. Don't use own base point is the other option that becomes available um, here. This means that if you've got an effects queue list, um, when you tick don't use own base point, it means the uh, base point, for example, the position is taken from a, uh, another queue list, not the one that you're currently working in. Although arguably I suggest that this 
uh, tip box has largely been superseded by the effects masters in Vista Free, which I'm going to talk about uh, in just a couple of minutes. This last tip box here, synchronize effect with previous effect. Um, this is when you're going from one queue to another um, of the same feature type. Um, for example, if you press play on queue number two, 50% uh, of way through the cycle, when queue number two plays, it will also start from 50% of that effect cycle. If this box is unticked, the effect will always start from the beginning of that effect. So that's basically what that means. If it's unticked, the effect will always start from the beginning. Whereas if it's ticked, it will try and merge and blend that, uh, the effect cycle of the previous queue. That is on by default. I'm just going to make another queue list again and just make this uh, zero seconds. Another effect type that we have um, is a matrix effect. With a matrix, it, I've got one set up in this show file here already. It's essentially a gridded structure where you can drag and drop your fixtures into it. And then the console knows to treat this as a single set piece. For example, like I've got at the back of my stage here. If I just come back to another layout, to create a matrix, all you do in your layout is you right click, uh, come into matrix and create a matrix. You can specify a grid size if you wish, um, but failing that, you can actually just take this bottom right hand corner and expand this. And all we do from here is we just drag and drop our fixtures into this space, just like they are physically laid out in the real world. So just to save a little bit of time in this webinar, that's what I've done in this uh, layout just here. And the crucial bit is when you're working with a matrix is don't drag and drop over the fixtures like you normally would because this is just selecting the fixtures as normal. The key to working with matrix is click the matrix um, and then you can work with it. So if I do a new effect and do a color mix swing, and just do an example here, we'll just do red and yellow just to see that clearly in WYSIWYG. <coughs> and we'll speed that up a little bit as well. The key difference with a matrix is within the sequence tab, we have something that we call sweeps, uh, which is basically running across this matrix as a whole. So we can do uh, vertical, we can do, sorry, vertical, no, horizontal, <laughs> vertical, uh, radial, uh, diamond, so all sorts of nice stuff. We've still got all of this overlap and stagger control, so I can reduce the overlap to make that thinner or different stuff. We can uh, rotate it if we want to make it do sort of diagonal across there. Um, so just by using Vista's inbuilt effects engine, the matrix, we can actually get quite a lot of content out of sort of pixel map arrays like this one. You can do that with all of the features, even um, position effects if you had moving lights in here and all that type of stuff using those same sort of uh, sweep out effects. The third effect that becomes available when working with a matrix is called a video effect. And currently we support simple animations in the form of animated GIFs. Um, so I have a couple on my computer already. To find them, we just hit the browse down here and then we can select the animated GIF of our choice. Let's go for the triangles for now. So this section here is the entire content of that uh, animation and the corner points just allow us to crop that. So if I crop this in, we would now be mapping this part of the animation to the entire matrix. And this is a little preview of that down here. Uh, so that's basically it for uh, matrix effects. You can add animations or you can use the inbuilt uh, swing or wave effects on any of the features for the uh, lights that you have in there. As I mentioned at the beginning, uh, this is a little preview of R3, uh, which should be out in the near future. One of the new effects features that we've added is the ability to define how many times the effect runs for. So if I show you this in example, I'll just make it square and uh, diamond. Let's just reduce this a little bit. And I'll speed it up. 
there it is. So I can be happy with that. And the new feature is in the uh, first tab and it's here, it's called cycles. So infinite is exactly the same as what will you be working with, with uh, R1 or R2, but this time you can define say run once, run twice. So if I run this queue now, what we should see is it runs once, twice, and then stops. So you can really use that uh, for some more flexibility, which is, which is nice. I think the last bit that I need to talk about here is effects masters and how we can use those uh, with our effects. You don't have to use them, of course, but it is useful if you're working in uh, live event situations. So an effects master uh, in Vista is just like a component. So they're actually here, they have their own tab. The reason for this is just because we let you create an unlimited amount of them. It's just for your own flexibility. Um, so let's just call this uh, Jack, for example. So I've now got an effects master called Jack. It's completely up to you. And we assign effects masters to um, playbacks the same as anything else. I'm gonna use a little MV just for space saving in this demonstration. And if we go over to the components, find effects masters, we can jack, jack into here and we'll have control over that now. So let's just pull this over here for a second. And what can I demonstrate this with? Let's go for intensity, we'll see what happens. So if I do a new uh, intensity effect. We'll make it square just so you can see it. One at a time. Now remember, I'm probably gonna to want to tap the tempo of this. So just drop this to uh, per fixture. That's currently running at the rate set here. And the key bit is that you need to link whatever fader you want or effects master to this. So we do this by the drop down, and then I can link the jack effects master to this. So you can see that I can speed it up or I can slow it down. And if I was to tap this tap button here at the bottom, which do not be a tap tempo, uh, this would be dynamically changing that effects rate from here. And of course, even if we're copying and pasting fixtures, be it in a queue or in the live programmer, they would all be linked up to this exact same uh, master fader, which is, which is great. Size is um, separate. You can choose to link that to a different effects master or the same one, if you like. It's it's completely up to you how you want to how you want to do that. Back in the virtual console view, if I just dock this back in here, we actually have um, effects master fader actions as well. The default is effects rate. If you want to change that to be effects rate and size, you actually have to go and find it and define that this is the uh, effects master rate and size. So when I pull the size down, it's going back to um, what I programmed at. The reason it's stopping is because the base intensity for this effect was programmed at 100. If you want it to fade out, you just have to program these to be uh, off, he says. Like that, you can see I've just programmed it on this pointy uh, just here. But let's pop that back to another rate for now and speed it up a little bit. Are there any questions on uh, effects masses before I move on to the next little bit? Not that I see. Uh... Yeah, no, we're good with that right now. Cool. Um, another little preview um, for R three is we actually have a, a a large number of new effects master button actions. Um, the first one is reset to tap to rate, um, which can be used in junction with rate multipliers. So we have double, half, and quadruple and also zero as well. And we kind of have two actions set. We have temporary. So if I just go for a temporary double rate, let's go for two. When I hold it, it's doubling it. But when I let go, it's gonna return back to the base rate 
partner before. So that's what temporary is. It's just like a flash key. As long as you're holding it, it's going to double up or half or quadruple or whatever you've set. And we also have um, just double rate. So if I press double, if I just uh, slow this down a little bit, let's just tap something uh, more sensible. Let's go for 80. So if I press double, it doubles it to 164. And if I press it again, it just keeps on doubling it which is where reset to tap to rate comes in handy because whenever you're ready again, you can press reset and it goes back to the 82. So this is useful for musical builds and decays and that type of stuff. And also we've got temporaries for rate and size at zero, which can make it look like the effect has stopped. And I say look because the effect is still running in the background, but who cares? Um, as long as it looks like it stopped to the audience, you can really use that to your advantage, which is a tip that I give quite often. So here, if I hold this, it's uh, stopping the effect on this light here. So yeah, that's a little uh, sneak peek of um, some new effects matter button tempos there, which is cool. Any questions on that in the chat there, Ben? Nope, nope. I think everybody's following along just fine. Unless everyone's too excited to see those new <laughs> functions. And... It makes me excited, I can tell you. Yes, yeah, so there's definitely a lot of potential in that, and especially in busking and, and uh, you know, giving you more flexibility to, to run things on the fly. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Where can you stop the effects is a question just came up. Right? So there's a number of ways. Uh, you can actually click on the effects here, but you can see I've got multiple effects running. So if I click stop effect on this, it would just literally stop this effect here and that gets rid of it. Um, another way is you can actually just select the fixtures um, and you could click on the actual feature drop down. So this is intensity. So I'd click this one here and press stop effect. Or you can find it on a function key toolbar. The default is actually the blue modifier exactly where the effects button normally is, so F11. But you can see that you can also um, assign it to a function key. And to assign a function key, you just right click and then find it from the appropriate option. So stop effects is actually in tools and uh, stop effects down here. And then stop all effects or a feature of you, your type. So I actually like to have it on a, on a key that I can hit uh, fairly quickly, which is just up there. So there was a question about doing the flyout effect, which mm -hmm. I know you did earlier mm -hmm. uh, with the multi-parameter effects. Mm -hmm. um, if did you save? Was that saved as a template? No, it's not. But let's let's do it and uh, okay. we'll take a look at that. So to create a flyout effect, first I do my position. So I do a new position swing effect, and when I just position my lights where I want them to, I'll use presets for now just to. Uh, make my life a little bit easier. So it's going from the singer to up in the air. And then the key bit is you go to the advanced tab and click the new effect from here. So let's add in intensity. I still use swing personally, just cause I find it easier to align them. Uh, and then you just set your points. So you turn the lights off. I'll also make it snap on both just so you can see a bit more clearly in the demonstration, but of course you don't have to. So you can now see that those lights are flying up. You can still play around with the sequencing uh, as before and then the different sort of fan curve shapes as well. So these lights are always flying out from that singer to uh, up in the air. In terms of saving this as a template, if I like this and want to use this uh, all the time, you can press the save template button up here and we'll give this a name. So we'll call this uh, Jack's Flyout. And the options are to save to your user library or your show library. If you save to your user library, this effect template will be available generically in all new show files. But if you just save it in the show file, it's only available in this uh, exact show file, unless you merged in, of course. But anyway, uh, let's clear the programmer and we'll select some different fixtures. And within your effects templates, uh, pick you should see uh, your Jack's flyout effect, which should do exactly that. It's flying out from the singer to up in the air. 
one thing to bear in mind though when you're um, applying these effects is do watch out for this template because if I had applied this from the position feature I would have only applied the position part of that effect it would have filtered out the intensity so just bear that in mind if you are using advanced effects make sure that you're applying it from the all filter or you've got the filtering quick picker components uh, toggled off in your user preferences of your uh, application does that answer the question yep that takes care of it so there's cool. some excitement about the new effects buttons mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. the masters so uh, yes yeah, so those are recent ads in the, the last couple builds of this beta that we've done. So they're still, you know, it's, it's all being tested to make sure that it all still works properly. So, yep. So I'm glad we started the effects first. That was 40 minutes of talking about the uh, effects. Is there any preference what you'd like me to talk about next? Uh, we said we might talk about extracts or snapshots. Yes, at this point, we're kind of just opening it up a little bit because everyone seemed interested in, in effects yesterday. Um, and going through that, uh, Robert says extracts, uh, which is something that I that I agree with too. Extracts are very powerful, and very few people know about them. So, so let's let's so go Steve. through it. Let's let's talk yep. about uh, extracts. So the way I explain extracts is you can basically think of extracts as a clipboard of. Um, ideas or programming. Um, they're actually initially designed to help you program QLIS, um, but they do have uses in live busking situations as well. So if you just bear with me for just a minute, we'll just see if we can uh, program uh, a couple of things just for a minute, just up here. Let's go, uh, let's go magenta and then we'll add a new queue and turn this off. So what I'm gonna do in the uh, timeline very quickly, he says, is I'm just going to adjust some uh, custom timing for these guys. So we'll just make the position happen. Then we'll make the color happen. I'm going to change my fan mode for position. Let's just fan this out like that. We'll do a similar thing with uh, color. Then we'll have them all fly up to the air together. Then we'll do something like that. And we'll, I don't know, let's find, uh, let's find intensity. I mean, I'll just scale this back to 0 0.5 seconds as well. So if I just show you what this queue looks like. Queue number one is the lights fade up. They then move from the ends and then they change uh, yellow. And then it halts, of course, ready for me to press play on queue number two, which flies up in the air together and then sweeps across magenta. And then queue number three would do a fan in from the end intensity off so that's cool we like that i'm just going to select multiple cues together by holding the uh, shift key so you can see i've selected multiple cues here and to create an extract of this just like anything else in the components uh, quick picker we can right click and press create new extract and the create new extract uh, pops up and it wants to store the selected cues and all the fixtures and all the features, of course, of which you can mask if you wish, just like store part or presets, but storing everything is okay. So this is the extract. Let's just close this queue list for a moment and I'll show you the live use first. So I've just programmed that on these 10 spots. But what I can do, if I just change my fan mode back and uh, change my split group to be group. I can now select different fixtures and apply this same programming. Again, watch out for the filter though. So if I click OK, what we should see is they all fade up, move from the ends, change color left to right. The point is a color wheel, by the way. So you can see the software has generically applied the target look and design that I programmed on these Vipers onto these fixtures. And the way the extract application works is exactly the same as copy and pasting. It just duplicates the 10. So that's why it looks the same in this example. But it also takes into account um, your fan shape and your group or split selection, which is why I was careful to make sure they were as I wanted them before I applied the extract. If I go back into that, uh, last cue list that I just made here and just go to the end and I select the pointers 
This was, I guess, the in the original version of the extract. If I apply the extract of an acute list, the console will ask me if I want to uh, insert or merge the programming. If I select insert, this will program Q, so Q4, 5, and 6 for me on these pointers. If I do merge, the first Q will be placed in Q3 and I'd have 4 and 5. But I'll just show you insert to make it easier. So it's inserted three new queues for the pointers. And if I go to the end here, I'll show you the difference on uh, this one. If I do merge, I just get an extra two queues on the end because these robins will be merged into the pointers going off. So if I just show you this as an example, one, two, and three we've already seen, but now queue number four is the pointers moving, changing color, doing that again. So you can see this is the merge. It was in the same queue. So if you've got complex queue event programming that you know you're going to be duplicating on different fixtures in future queues, you can create an extract and save you a load of time of having to go into that detail uh, again and again. So that's its primary function. So Jack, a question I was brought up is why extracts don't save the queue names. If you're using it like this and you try to duplicate your programming, uh, would you want the queue names to be transferred over as well, or, or would you rather it just be uh, fresh, new, empty queues? I mean, usually it's it's taking the, the fixture information, really. It's really all about the, the fixture information. It's just whether it's you, – typically, you're not copying the whole queue. Although we right. are in this example, typically, you've already got a certain scene, and it's about just picking up kind of more individual fixture information. This is my opinion on it, which is typically why the queues aren't – uh, names. Uh, yes. yes. Robert's saying Q names would be great when extracting FX lists. Could that be an option? Well, we, we you know, we look at everything. So, um, and we see what, we see what is possible and what isn't possible. Everything that sometimes we come up with things that say, uh, it'd be great if it does, does this. And we talk to some of the coders and they say, yeah, no, that can't be done. Or we think of something that's absolutely ridiculous and say, uh, you know, what about this? And we think we can't do it, but then they say, oh yeah, that's an easy thing. So, um, you know, send over any of the suggestions and we'll look at it and see what happens. Uh, just one last example on the, um, on the extracts. Um, so with effects templates, you can save the base position into the effects template because that's typically not something that goes with it, but you can create an extract of a position base point and the effect together. So if I show an example of that, let's just put these lights on the singer. And if I just do two quick effects on this guy, let's just do a small circle, which is nice. And we'll also do a uh, swing effect. See how this works. Speed that up. So if I create an extract of this, which is currently in my program, which is OK, um, I'm going to be picking up and storing the Singer preset plus these two effects templates as individual effects. Of course, I could link in Masters too, but I won't do in this example. So now if I clear my programmer and select different fixtures I didn't originally have, and apply this same creative idea, they'll go and do that effect around that exact base point because you've combined multiple things together. Again, just food for thought. Um, you might find it useful uh, to, to use alongside your normal presets and effects templates. So we've got about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes left of this uh, webinar. So a question that just uh -huh. came up, which which is is one of those ones where it's there there are multiple answers for it, different answers for it, um, but for churches who want to save a pastor look that saves all parameters for intensity and position that can be quickly recalled. Uh, most people are doing it with a single queue list and mm -hmm. just having a, a yep. submaster queue. Mm -hmm. um, would a preset be a better way of doing this, or an extract be a better way of doing this? Um, I don't I, I, think there's a wrong answer, honestly. There isn't, although arguably I would say presets and extracts 
aren't a good way of doing that. The reason for that is that you typically have to have a fixture selection for these to work. Um, for example, if we created a, a state here, or whatever that may be, who doesn't matter. Let me just store this as a preset as an example. So we'll call this a look and I'll just store in intensity and position and color. So if I clear my programmer and apply this look, then yeah, of course that's gonna go into that exact look. But if the operators perhaps accidentally got one fixture selected and they apply that look, then it's only gonna apply that. So I think using extracts and presets potentially is more dangerous. Whereas if you're using a, a single queue list, you're guaranteed to get the look of that queue list. And also you can be triggering that queue list to play or release from other queue lists, which I think is arguably more useful, but if it works for you, then it, it works for you. A, a preset way of doing what you did there uh, works fine for programming your queue list, which is exactly what I've, I do in those situations where I'll, I will set up a, a base look with a preset uh, with all my intensities and, and colors and whatnot for a specific section of lights, save that as a preset, but I don't play it back from that preset. I use that preset to program my queues. Mm -hmm. That way, it's, it can be adjusted later on and it will just it'll adjust on my cues, but I also have all the information I need always at my fingertips. So yeah, doing it, doing it from a cue list is a little more, is much more safe uh, when it comes to uh, your playback. So quick poll in the chat. Over the last 10 minutes, we want uh, snapshots or inserted commands. Yes, we haven't. It's it's been somewhat quiet. So uh, Robert says commands, which is a quick one. Uh, we we've got commands and snapshots. So uh, <laughs> yep, it's we'll gonna be you. it's gonna be b both. Uh, commands are quick. Snapshots are a little more involved. Um, Let's see how we can uh, power through it. Let's have yeah. a look. Uh, so insert a commands are where you can get your queue list to perform another action, which might be releasing another queue list typically, or indeed <laughs> applying a snapshot. Uh, but they're pro they're done as queue programming, so you program them into the queues, and the timeline's a good uh, way of sort of viewing this stuff. So we find it in the tools drop down, and it's inserted command just here, and it pops up. So I can choose to play another queue list uh, to release another queue list. So I could play my look one, for example. And when you insert the commands, you get it as this little event here that you can, that you can move around. So if I just play this back, before I do this slow, I'm just gonna make sure uh, that my look one fader is up because if you are triggering something that's on a fader, you still need to make sure that that fader is up or better still, put it on a faderless playback or perhaps not even a playback at all. But I'll just keep it here for now. Oops, wrong one. Let's just pop that back over there. This one. So if I now play this first cue, when it gets to this command, it will trigger that action, uh, which you can see coming in here. So from the inserted command window, you can do all of these actions. You choose the action and then you choose the target. So you might want to release a certain queue list. Um, a useful one is release all except, which would release all queue lists, usually apart from itself, which is useful um, if you're doing a new song, for example, as soon as you press play on this, you wanna make sure that all queue lists are released apart from just this one. So nothing else is gonna contribute to the stage look and potentially get in the way. I'm just gonna delete this uh, command here. There's actually a few more commands in here as well for R3. The new target is this queue list. So release this queue list. This is useful if you find yourself duplicating uh, queue list quite a lot. You don't have to go in and edit the commands. You, could, you just know it's going to release itself or arm um, time code on uh, this queue list, for example. Other new actions in the next release is the select button, which can select itself or another queue list. Typically, I think most people will use select 
itself, which we could use, say, in the first queue of every queue list. The reason this might be useful is if you're using this in combination with the playback view and you have a uh, follow on select toggled on, that means as soon as you're playing that master queue list, it's going to be um, brought up into uh, the playback screen automatically. And another one is load super playbacks. Um, so let's go for itself, cue this state. Which means, there was, go on. There was a question while you mm -hmm. had the effects window open, so mm -hmm. I tried to catch it in time. Mm -hmm. um, the effects uh, or the commands? In the command, sorry. Uh, do release all except for two different cues. I don't think we can currently do that at this time. No. Um, there are two, yeah, two different, not just queues, but two different queue lists. So that's, uh, that's another one of those things we'll have to look at. Um, and a command for stopping effects. And that's no, another one we don't have right now. No, again, because with the stop effects, that relies on fixture selection uh, or working with a live programmer. This is all to do with queue lists. So I'd argue that that wouldn't be likely to find itself in this window, but... Um, but we might give you a better way of stopping effects, not through not through this, perhaps. Um, Just out of curiosity, if you do release all except, can you you can't select multiple targets in there? No, I haven't tried that before. Okay, that's why no. I thought. Just checking. <laughs> uh, what's the last one I'm saying? Yeah, load super playbacks. So um, with load super playbacks, it automatically loads this queue list into the super playback section of your console which would have you, would save you having to create workspace snapshots just for loading queue lists in and out of the super playback. So that can save you some time in having those load in and out of there. Are there any questions on that? We did go through that quite quickly. Uh, no, I think the questions on that we've already answered. So unfortunately, I think we've run out of time in this uh, in this webinar. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, these are quite new to us, so we're still figuring out how much content we generally can fit in one hour. Um, the feedback so far has been good from yesterday's one. Please do provide more feedback um, if there's something you feel was great or perhaps not so great. We would like to improve this all the time. And I have a feeling that we might be doing more uh, in the coming weeks as well, which which is good. So no doubt we'll get onto snapshots amongst other things in the future. Yes, there have been lots of questions for, for other things that um, you know we'll have to certainly look at doing more uh, webinars, maybe based on single features rather than trying to get as much in as we can. Um, and uh, then we, you know, do do that, and some also some uh, uh, maybe a blog post or something like that too, similar to that. So, uh, do you want to take any other questions here, Jack? We have some. Yeah, yeah, for keep them coming. Some there's study. some there's some some ran some other questions here uh, that are sort of tied to what we have. Can we rename matrix matrices in the new version? The matrix is actually a group. So if you rename the group. Um, that's how it should be done. So if I was to label this, it's actually a matrix is actually just a gr dynamic group. So that's how you that's how you uh, relabel them. Yeah, and that's been something that's been around for a while. We've been able to rename those uh, depending on what you want to have on there. Uh, change the text color under the fixture icons. Yes, um, that is in there. Now, I'm not sure, to be honest, if memory serves me correctly, if this is an R3 feature or not. I think it was in R2, actually. So if you're on R1, you might want to uh, check that. And I, it's fixed a chooser, and I believe it's this one here. He says with confidence. The, the, in the Vista themes window, uh, I mean, we could, we could probably do a lot of time on just Vista themes it, itself. Uh, you can get in and really change a lot of the colors in, in Vista. Uh, for example, the yellow box around like the, the queue, and when it's open for editing, I used to change that to be red instead of yellow or something else on, on older versions. So um, again, you can probably get in there a lot too. Oh, Robert asked if there's time to show paste special. In um, context of queues or? Uh... Yes. In, 
I, I, I'm, I'm waiting for his response. Um, yes, in, in, I would say in queues, uh, what does Pace Special do? You know what, Robert? I think that's one of those things that we could get into another big rabbit hole with that one too. Uh, I think so. I'd prefer to do that in a different video just because then yeah. we're talking about alias queues and tracked versus non-tracked events and how Vista handles that. So I think um, yes. certainly it's sort of a good one for um, another webinar. And same with snapshots. I think we're going to have to, we're going to have to cut this one off because again, snapshots can be another big topic on what we can do. So um, the, the key for this one was to get through effects because I think that was the thing that everyone wants to see. Um, but hey, with the, with the, the amount of uh, interest we've had in these, I definitely see the demand for doing some more. So with that, yeah, I don't, <laughs> yeah. Robert says, please do more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I think, I think we'll definitely have to do some more and we'll have to, it's been great to try to figure these things out. So. Excellent. Well, thank you once again yes. for joining us, everybody, and uh, hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Yes. Sounds good. Thank you.